So we built out this flow that generated a client $26,000 in revenue in Klaviyo, and that is the abandoned cart flow. The reason why I'm making this video is because everyone on YouTube that is teaching you how to build an abandoned cart flow in Klaviyo is doing it wrong. And you're gonna leave a ton of revenue on the table if you don't get the distinction between abandoned cart flow and abandoned checkout flow. Here's what I mean. So by default, if you go on Klaviyo and click on flow ideas, you're gonna see something called the abandoned cart flow. And naturally you would click that thinking it's the abandoned cart flow. However, if you actually look at the triggers, you're gonna see it's the abandoned checkout flow. So I'm gonna hop over to a screen share right now and show you exactly what I mean and walk you through the steps you need to take in order to create an actual abandoned cart flow within Klaviyo. So by default in Klaviyo, abandoned cart isn't an event that is tracked. So if you head over to the flow idea section and click the abandoned cart reminder, you'll see the trigger for this is actually checkout started. So to actually get the abandoned cart flow, you want to scroll all the way down and you'll see another abandoned cart reminder with a little cogwheel symbol next to it where the trigger is actually add to cart. When you click here, you're going to see this flow requires setting it up a special add to cart metric. This is a thing that you're going to be missing. The reason why I have a little warning sign here instead of a red cross is because I've actually set this up before, but I've deleted it for the purposes of this demonstration. You want to click on learn more, which will take you to this web page right here, which is an article by Clavio showing you how to install your custom add to cart event. So how you do this is you want to look for one thing on your product page. So if you go to any product page for your store, this is just one that I've set up for quick demonstration purposes. You want to right click inspect element on the abandoned cart, uh, sorry, add to cart button. And you're going to see here the code responsible for this button. You want to look for two things. Either you're going to see right here, you're going to see if it says class, then you'll know to use the second option of the article, which talks about a class notation. Whereas if you see ID, you're going to want the standard add to cart snippet. Again, that's the button type submit. And then on the second line, you're going to either see ID or class. For my store, I have button product form cart submit and it's a class notation, meaning I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I want to copy and paste this snippet into your Shopify code. So if you want to go to themes and then click actions, click edit code, you'll need to search for product dot liquid right here which I've already had open. So if you don't have it open, just simply click this and it'll open it up. And you wanna scroll all the way down to the bottom. You see here, this is just a little comment that I've left for myself. Basically, this is where you add the snippet of code. Just copy and paste that in there. And you wanna make sure in query selector, the parameters you have in are the same as the add to cart button. So here, because my class is product form dot cart, submit, you want to copy this little snippet of code and just put a full stop right in front of it. So once you do this, you're going to click save. And then once that's saved, you'll be able to go to your analytics. And you're going to click add to cart event. And I'm just going to quickly add to cart again. And you'll see that in the activities feed, boyan at plethora.com has just added to cart. And from here, you're going to be able to install your abandoned cart flows. Oh, by the way, one thing I forgot to mention, to see this analytic, you have to actually have yourself enrolled into your mailing list. So to do so, just either add your email to any of your pop-up forms or just go down to the bottom and add your own email to the newsletter. Click subscribe and then perform another add to cart action. And there you go, you have the add to cart event. Now let me show you how to actually build the abandoned cart flow. You wanna to go to the flow section, view all ideas, and then scroll down again to abandoned cart reminder with the abandoned cart trigger. So here you wanna just call it abandoned cart flow. 
tag. There's not really anything you need to tag on this. Once you get here, it's literally like creating any other flow. The way we do it is we have the following flow filters first. So by default, you're gonna see the abandoned, the checkout started zero times, placed order zero times, and add to cart zero times filter. This is great. However, one thing that's really important is you don't, you don't wanna spam the same abandoned carts with the same emails over and over again. So on the flow filters here, you're gonna see, you're gonna click the little drop down arrow and you're gonna add a, another one, which is has not been in flow. And you wanna say in the last, to be honest, you can experiment with this. If you wanna be super aggressive, I would recommend nothing less than seven days. But if you wanna play it conservative, you can even do 28 days, which is four weeks. Once you hit save, you'll have all of the filters necessary to have an effective abandoned cart flow. In terms of content, it's pretty generic. In all of the emails, you wanna show the products that they added to cart and also include a call to action. In the second email, you may choose to include an offer or some testimonials. And in the third and fourth email, you wanna include some bit urgency and maybe scarcity, depending on what the offer is. And in the end, once you build everything out, it should look something like this, where the first email is sent either 30 minutes to kind of like four hours, you can kind of play around with the time frame, And then the second email is gonna be sent roughly a day after that. Third email should be sent around two to three days after. And then the fourth email, if you want, if you choose to have a fourth email, that is, you want to send it one day after the third email. Again, you can play around with time delays. Other things you could test out are subject lines. You can play around with the offers that you give them and obviously the content as well. In terms of the benchmarks you should be looking for, I'm going to throw on screen right now some of the open rates that we like to see on the abandoned cart flow and the kind of conversion rates. But of course that varies store by store. Ideally, what you want to see is a really, really high open rate on the first email, and then maybe a 5% drop off on the second email, five, another 5% 5 drop off on the third email, and so on. And obviously, if you need any help, I've linked down below my private Facebook group where I help e-commerce business owners generate more revenue through email marketing. So if you have any questions regarding, you know, building out this flow or maybe setting up the custom events or anything email marketing related, feel free to join that group, shoot up a post and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Also, I run an email marketing agency. So if you grow to a size where we can actually help you, you know, it's a win-win for the both of us. I'll see you in that group.